this is the link of the project mm-hmm. uh github uh, dot com slash ine minus labs and slash gcb goat can you can you can you send me so i have already the, can you send it in the chat so i can share it in the in the twitch chat yes <coughs> Okay. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. So for uh, uh, so I have already deployed this, and uh, uh, I have uh, uh, explained that as well mm-hmm. in my blogs. Uh, so you can go through that as well. Uh, okay. So the 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 deployment is pretty much straightforward. You just need to follow the steps uh, either from here or from my blog. Uh, <coughs> so after deploying this. Uh, so first of all so i just iterate the steps first you need to install the google cloud cli uh, that that will install g cloud and gs util and other uh, uh, utilities for the google cloud mm-hmm. and uh, then you will need to create a project uh, that will automatically be done uh, by running the command g cloud init uh, that will automatically create a project and uh, you will be good to go then uh, you need to modify a configuration file uh that is in terraform <coughs> all the deployment is done is done via terraform right yeah i'm uh, yeah you can just follow the blog then yeah mm-hmm. for deployment uh after that uh, after configuring the g cloud we just run uh, terraform apply and yeah we will be getting this uh, link of the application okay pretty awesome. much straight forward uh, forward uh, nothing much uh, complex here so yeah so uh, we will be uh, exploring this web application now okay would you like to explain a little bit of the first path that we are going to to be exploring yes yeah yeah so <coughs> this is the uh, flow which we'll be following so uh, this is the application will be a blog application mm-hmm. okay so multiple users will be there uh, who can log in with multiple uh, multiple access levels administrator normal user so different types of uh, uh, privileges for different users uh, so then we will be finding uh, srf uh, in in one of the functionality of the web application mm-hmm. and uh, uh, by exploiting the srf we will uh, try to read the files uh, internal files of the uh, uh, of the server where web application is deployed and uh, then by by enumeration we will try to find uh, the current working directory where the web application is running mm-hmm. And uh, then we will try to read source code uh, of the web application. So after all this, uh, then we will be compromising a user. Uh, so for that, we will be getting to know a, uh, a dump file, which is also uh, available on some other other development endpoint. So from there, we will be getting the access to the dump file, and uh, then we will be finding the uh, users hash users hashes mm-hmm. there uh, as well as the a security question which user has set for the password reset functionality so we will be abusing password reset functionality to uh, gain access of that uh, administrator user and then uh, yeah so that's it for this second path okay, okay. so okay. yeah so let's see this first and yes. then we can uh, see the other path Uh, okay so we just copy this open this and let's open our bob as well so uh i am using this foxy proxy uh, proxy extension you can also configure uh, by going to the proxy settings okay uh Okay, I guess we are using that to capture some HTTP traffic with Burp, right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, basically, what we are doing is we are uh, we will be seeing 
we will be clicking everywhere and try to open every functionality of the web application mm -hmm. and uh, we will be seeing all the traffic uh, in the web suit means what is going on under the hood uh, so this is the home page okay now first thing you can do is you can click on any of these blogs so it will uh, yeah open like this mm -hmm. <laughs> opening new new uh, page is not working somehow uh, so if you see the uh, if you open this image in new tab first thing uh, you you will notice is that uh, this is a bucket mm -hmm. uh, so any anything uh, starting from this URL storage dot google apis dot com and after that uh, a bucket name and after this this is the directory and uh, this is the file name so if you see any url like this so that means that is a uh, storage bucket first thing okay uh, so what we can do is we can try to uh, save this somewhere so first thing we get is this that this is uh, so we are guessing that this is a, a storage bucket And if you see, we have uh, login functionality as well. <coughs> and we can just try to use some test credentials, like subscribe at the rate, please, mm -hmm. <laughs> <Dot> .com, <laughs> password, one, two, three, four, five. Good, good name, good name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> login. Uh, so we got there. Something went wrong. Mm -hmm. So if we see here, uh, login request, and we got could not handle the request error. Something okay. Mm -hmm. So if we see here, we have a, a sign up page as well, and we can create a user. So let's say sub subscribe. Subscribe, please. <laughs> please. Just, just like an idea. Subscribe.com. <laughs> uh, anything here, you can give your real address as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, country, phone number, anything. And security question. So, what is your favorite uh, favorite sport? So, what is your favorite sport, Carlos? I think it is My football. Sport, yeah, let's go uh, football. Okay, so <laughs> we are also doing social engineering <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, so uh, we have created. Let me save this. Otherwise, I will forget. <laughs> uh, username is this. Password is this. Uh, yeah. So we have created account. Okay. Let's try to log in. And as expected, I forgot, I think subscribe. No, it, it was please, please that subscribe. Okay. 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 It was okay. the other, the other way around. Mm -hmm. SUB. Yes, yeah. So we got logged in. <coughs> mm -hmm. So if you see, uh, uh, let's see what are the functionalities and uh, what we have for this user. And yeah, nothing here. New post. Yeah, so we have some functionality here. Posts. Uh, yeah, nothing here. So the idea is to uh, try to enumerate everything mm -hmm. on the web application. Yeah, we are looking for vulnerabilities at and this yeah, point. So this, this is the uh, 
this is our profile all the information is there so we can go through uh, normal pen testing as well uh, try to find stored access here by changing this uh, but that is out of scope okay uh, initially uh, i could you, tried could you, something uh, tried put, to do that sorry sorry brought up could you put the screen a little yeah, bit yeah. bigger so people can read better what you are doing uh zoom in yeah you want me to zoom in you can zoom yeah a little bit a little bit more one one more if you don't mind cool. okay thank yeah. you man. so is it yeah so the uh so we have a functionality to create a new post uh let's try to do that uh again please subscribe <laughs> uh posting date anything so if you see here, uh, we can please choose. Uh, it is written here. Please choose any one image upload request, either from passing URL or uploading the image locally. Mm -hmm. So for this post, we can either upload a image from our uh, system, or we can pass a URL of the image. It will automatically be downloaded and it will be used for that particular post. Uh, so if we get a sample image URL, uh, let's say for Google. Yeah, so this is Google image, copy mm -hmm. the URL and paste here. And type here. Yeah, again, <laughs> please subscribe. <laughs> it's like the new uh, Lord And if we intercept this request for the image first, and see the response of this so what it uh, so what this application has done is uh, it has stored this image this google image into a storage bucket okay there, there okay. is there is no way and, we can and, do that bigger right uh suit, i think we can but i don't know how to yeah. well uh, we, we... In there, if you cannot read that, we just we just have a URL to the GCP storage packet where the image was uploaded to. Um, it's just a URL, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so we okay. can. Uh, I can show you uh, show that here. Okay. Uh, we can increase the font of this. Okay. So, uh, what what just happened is we have given a, uh, a URL of an image. Uh, mm -hmm. Google image basically, and uh, in the response, we got uh, that that image was stored in this uh, this bucket and at this location mm -hmm. slash images folder. And this is the name of the image. So, if we if I try to open this, uh, same image, okay? Yeah, so exactly same image is uh, being was stored in our bucket. So if if you guys are familiar with uh, SSRF, uh, so this is a potential uh, parameter or potential field where uh, you should try to test for SSRF because application is loading external URLs and uh, saving the output in in a bucket. Mm -hmm. So if if some of you guys have already familiar with SSRF, so this is a perfect uh, field to check for SRF vulnerabilities. <clears throat> so for that, uh, if you have Burp Pro, uh, I'm also having, but uh, for this demonstration, I'm not using that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can use Burp to collaborator and then try to pass the collaborator uh, host name here. And then you will be seeing uh, then you will be checking your collaborator interactions whether you get anything or not. So open source alternative is also available for that. Uh, that is interact sh project discovery. Yeah, this one. <clears throat> uh, 
so okay. this is uh, uh, the absurd collaborator alternative okay? mm -hmm. for free we we are going to be capturing the uh, ssrf http request with interact the shades right to to learn more about what yes, is happening yeah. and how is the image getting downloaded yes yes yeah yeah yes absolutely yes uh so yeah it is opened here as well yeah so let's copy this okay uh, so it will give you similar host name like uh, burpsuit subdomain okay you copy this and send this request to repeater and again uh, i'm i don't know how to increase the font of this yeah uh So, uh, I'm not gonna blame you. Yeah, so, I don't know how to uh, do that. Uh, yeah, you can blame me. So basically, uh, we are modifying uh, the image URL mm -hmm. okay, and passing that uh, interact as such uh, host URL. name here. Okay. Awesome. Uh, so and then we click send, and we got another image which is stored in our bucket. Mm -hmm. Okay, and if you see uh, this this bucket name is different. This is another bucket. Okay, we okay. can also save this. This is different than the previous one. <clears throat> uh, and if we try to open this image, so. We can see the uh, response of the uh, intact as such mm -hmm. uh, collaborator, similar to collaborator. Okay. So basically, we are we are exploiting an SSR vulnerability where the yeah, so, response uh, isn't given in the response of the server, but is stored in the bucket. Yes, yes. So responses are saved as a images, not PNG files. Mm -hmm. uh, so we can also see. Uh, the DNA similar same thing as Burpsuit, DNS interactions as well as HTTP. So this was the request done by the application uh, for for storing that image, uh, and uh, they are using Magic Browser, okay, the user agent, and this was the response. And the same response we uh, saw in the image uh, contents just now. Uh, so we have SRF. Now, there are multiple things now we can try to do, uh, multiple protocols we can use. So simplest is to try to read files, first of all. Uh, for that, what we need to do is just modify the URL to file colon slash slash and uh, any internal file. Uh, so currently, uh, we don't know whether it is Windows or uh, Linux, so you can give uh, default fi uh, file paths of Windows as well. Uh, or uh, I, I already know that it is uh, Unix, so let's use Unix files. So uh, we quick, can try to read. Quick thing, Prak, if you yes. don't mind. So I, I have been searching. Mm -hmm. It looks like we can change the font size of Burp in appearance in okay. the same okay. place where you can put the light or dark theme. So let's try to go there. Um, yeah. That should be in, 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 if you go and search it. Um, that's a good question. Where should that be? Do you have any settings around there? Yeah, click on- User set settings are there. Yeah. Settings, yeah. Click settings, let's check. Size. Appearance. Yeah. Font size, yeah. 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 Let's make this 18. Okay. Yeah. A, a little bit more, a little bit more. A little bit more, if okay. you don't mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 24. Yeah, 24 should be okay. Uh, awesome. So the th <laughs> no no uh, see the the font size of the burp suit has increased but the request and responses are of same size no. Actually, they uh, are. you are completely right. Uh, 
It's just too complicated to read them. Yeah, so... <laughs> I mean, Burp Suit's font size increased, but requests and responses are still of same size. Okay, good. Uh, good job, Burp. <laughs> uh, maybe this is the setting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's try to change let's that. Let's see this. Eight. Yeah, this is the one. Okay. <laughs> so we have uh, modified the displayed <laughs> one earlier. Uh, message, message editor is the one we need to Perfect. Edit. Nice one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. We learn something new every day. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we are trying to read some internal files. Mm -hmm. Host name. Host name. So this file basically stores the host name of the system, uh, of the current system on which web server is running. Let's try to read this. And if we load this image, so let me edit here. Uh, let me get this URL here. So we don't need to go to the browser again and again. And we still didn't got I think uh, proxy does not, uh, this saves the PNG files here. <coughs> okay, it, it is there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we got this, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. So this is the host name, okay, mm -hmm. worker. So basically we are able to read files. Now we can try to innovate things. Now, let's say parse wd file. Yeah, let's get that one. And this is the image name. Copy this. And modify here. Send. So we got parse wd file. Cool. So let me stay organized. Uh, host name and let's read uh, uh, current process info. Okay, for that we have proc. So slash proc is the uh, uh, basically RAM contents. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not a real file system; it is a uh, virtual file system which is created for uh, a period of time till the process is running. Okay. Uh, so for each process, uh, we have different process IDs. And currently we don't know the process ID of our current process. So we can use self. Mm -hmm. So this thing I have explained uh, somewhere else uh, while uh, while I was writing about LFI. Web, 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 web. Yeah, web. PHP, LFI. <coughs> so uh, you can, if you want to read in detail how these uh, paths work and what other things we can do with uh, reading files, you can, again, I'm sending you uh, go through this, okay? <clears throat> uh, yeah. So we can try to read the information of the current process. That is uh, uh, self and slash status. So let's try to read this uh, virtual file. And send we got another image so each time you are trying to read a file a new image is generated okay mm -hmm. and let's view the contents of this
so if you see uh, we got information about the current process the process id is 7 so the web application is running with the process id 7 parent process id is 1 uh, and uh, that is 1 is for i think init process <coughs> if i am not wrong uh, is that it no carlos yeah yeah i can read it i can read it uh, one one is for uh, init process no in linux <laughs> Uh, and uh, UID is 33, group ID is also 33. So 33 is for, uh, and we also have uh, buzzable D uh, output. So we can determine with which user this process is running, this web application is running. So if you see, WW data is the user with which this uh, web application is running because we, we got to know about the UID and GUID, and if we match that to the buzzable D file, uh, we can see that the uh, current user with which the application is running is WW data. So you can write this, all these things, okay? Uh, whatever you are getting, that current user is WW uh, data for the web. And earlier we got the host name that was worker. Mm -hmm. So, uh, now we can read environment variables as well. Um, this was the in, uh, of output of status. But let's see to read environment variables. For that, the name of the file is environ. And we get one more image. Again, copy this. Uh, paste, send. So these are the environment variables. Now the first thing uh, which might um, seems interesting if you already know about JWT authentication. So we got JWT secret and uh, what that means is we can forge cookies with this. So let's save this as well. Um, JWT so secret. Prab, we, we are we are yeah. almost in the first 40 minutes of this call. So we should restart the call if you don't mind. Okay, so right now? Yeah. Yeah, because this is going to close. Okay, so uh, okay. So same link to join now? Same link, yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. Okay, so let's speed once again. Yeah, yeah. see you in a bit. <laughs> cool. So let's leave. Sorry about these guys. Um, let's do a recap once while I am connected again with the call. So Prav has already found a necessary ref vulnerability in in a, in some host that is running in GCP, and we have been exploiting the Prog self environment, which uh, Prog is a, as he has said, is a virtual file system where um, information about each process is going to be stored. You, a process can access its own information in Prog slash self. And he has been accessing this directory, and the last thing he has accessed was Prox Cells Environ, which is which have leaked all the environment variables of the process that we are that that the process that we are attacking is having. So we managed to get all these uh, environment variables. So Prab, are you are you there? Are you back? Yes, yes, yeah, I'm cool. back. So if you can also turn so... on your camera. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, so sorry. Let me let me answer also a couple of questions that we have in the chat. If you are able to write files yes, yes, yes. on the system, you are also able to execute a cell command using the same method. Uh, no. Sometimes in some exercises, depending on the technology, you might transform a file read into a RC. But no, there isn't any straightforward way to to do this. Actually, one of the ways to do, do this is to uh, read the SSH um, private key and just access via SSH. If you have the luck that 
it is connected, you have network access and so on. Um, nice, you, yeah, that's all the questions. So let's continue. And you found the JWT secret? I guess we are going to be abusing this. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> no, we are not yet, okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> So we, we got uh, JWT secret, but uh, in this scenario, we, we are not, not abusing this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So let's see other things. Okay. <clears throat> so we got uh, another variable that is port, port 8080. We can write that as well. Port 8080 function region us rest one so this is also important because we are in gcp environment so we got to know that this uh, web application uh, resources are deployed in us west one actually this is great because as you uh, should take notes of everything just like prab is doing because most of the people just will uh, go with the flow and if you are doing a three day spent test the second day you will have forgotten what you found the first day so it's really good you are taking these notes. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I earlier I used to forget as well, so then I uh, <laughs> got into habit to keep notes. <coughs> uh, uh, yeah, so next thing we have is Node JS four hundred ten. Don't uh, no idea what is this. G Cloud underscore project. So we have a project ID. This mm -hmm. is also important. So. Let's save this as well. So everything related to G Cloud is important. Okay, uh, we might need something somewhere, and we don't know uh, while compromising the environment. Bucket name. This is also important. Uh, we already have this bucket name. Okay, yeah. same bucket name. So no need to save this revision. Uh, K underscore revision. Function time equal to one. No idea what is this. Function timeout second is 60. GCF block runtime underscore go uh, something something uh, is equal to backend minus function. Uh, again, no idea. Entry point <coughs> equal to main. So this, uh, so you can guess something. I have from here as well that uh, entry point for this application or function is main. So what that means is uh, this web application uh, or this functionality is running from main function, mm -hmm. something like that. You can guess from this entry point. From that, uh, from this information, I suppose we are in a in a container running a Google Cloud function. We are we are not in a virtual machine or we are not in a Docker container. We are in a Google Cloud function. Is that correct? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yes. <clears throat> so this is serverless uh, service by, by the G Cloud functions. And again, we got uh, this project ID. We already mm -hmm. have that. Uh, now the next thing is home so this is important home directory okay slash root okay uh home home uh variable okay <coughs> ld underscore library path so this path contains the uh libraries okay means where the libraries are stored. Mm -hmm. We can save this as well. Uh, till here, yeah. And uh, if you notice, we are unable to copy this, uh, means I am unable to copy this because this output contains backslash n, okay, in between. If I show you, uh, if you see, Mm -hmm. yeah, on yeah. the right, I'm not sure if you're able to see yeah, on yeah. the inspector, there is backslash zero. So whenever I try to copy this, it is not being copied to my clipboard because we have this backslash zero. <laughs> uh, so you might also face this. So uh, don't assume that your system is not working. <laughs> uh, 
it is not getting copied because we have backslash zero. Okay, so you need to make sure you are not copying that. Uh, initially, when I saw this, so I was uh, unable to uh, determine why it is not working. Mm -hmm. uh, so x underscore Google uh, Crowd Project, another variable, same project ID we have here. Function memory variable, uh, 256. So this is kind of uh, how much memory we have allocated to this function. So 256 MB. Function signature type, HTTP, uh, virtual environment variable, uh, slash layer, slash Google again. So there is an indication that uh, this function is running Python code. Okay, because we have seen uh, yes, yeah. yeah, it's definitely running uh, Python. Yeah. Okay, so by by these indications, P Python, it is coming again and again. So you can just guess for now that this is a Python uh, code mm -hmm. which is running in the backend. Uh, Next thing, uh, x underscore Google underscore function timeouts second 60 function target uh, again main function identity again same thing. Uh, so yeah, cool. function in the function identity parameter we got service account. Okay, again this is related to G Cloud. So save this. <coughs> so uh, different services are linked with different service accounts in G Cloud. So Whenever you get something like this, so uh, it is good idea to save. Function region again, US West one path variable. So this is important. Uh, this is this will uh, again guide you that this is a Python application, and uh, path variable is uh, is the variable which contains uh, all the paths. Uh, maybe maybe this, we should uh, the... speed that a little bit. Maybe we should speed up a little bit because um, we are we are dedicating a lot of time to environmental variables. Um, I think we we got all all, all we need. Um... Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Google GC project ID again, same thing. Function identity. ECP goat again. Uh, I think this is same. Three B. To yes, yeah. Debian front end on PWD present working directory. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is That's important. PWD slash workspace. Yeah. So uh, all these things we we got to know about this application, uh, host name, all these things, present working directory, function identity, uh, service account, project ID, region, port number, secret entry point okay so uh, we will be requiring these uh, now okay so okay. next thing we you can try to read is uh, uh, command line so this file will show you uh, with which command this process has started okay so again we got a new image And oh, this is yeah. So let's try to open that in new tab. Paste send. Yeah. So you can see this is the command which started this uh, uh, functions. This function, okay, this web application functionality, basically, which is storing the external images. Mm -hmm. And if I paste that here, Python three again. So we are not able to copy this because it contains backslash zero. Okay. Uh, so I need to copy this separately. So this was the command which started uh, the uh, the process. Okay. Python three and then this. So if you see, we have uh, something, some binary uh, named as functions framework. Okay. <laughs> so if you do a quick Google search for this uh, browser, 
let's turn into a uh, proxy off so i just search this on google and the first thing which came is functions framework okay and you can read about this and the second link will take you to the github repo so this is a github repository for functions framework so this is a service provided by uh, cp okay for running python code okay so uh, in short what this does is if you have a normal very simple function like this def hello uh, and which is returning just hello world so what it will do is it will create a web server for this so you don't need to do all those things manually importing request module and then http making request so it will does uh, it will do automatically all those things okay so you not don't need to do that uh, manually by importing different modules and then uh, writing code for a web server so it will directly give you a web server like this so the syntax for creating this uh, function is this import functions framework okay uh and then we will be specifying a at the rate functions framework and you, and you make it bigger and then yes okay <clears throat> so uh so this is kind of uh, automation for creating web server for a simple function okay mm -hmm. so you will get a direct url and then you can directly uh, call this and you will get hello world okay so all those manual steps of importing requests module just gone okay so makes your life easy if you want to create a web server and uh, it will get a flask uh, application for you so uh, by reading this documentation uh, in the example they they have created a main file for the example so we already have uh, the current working directory that is workspace and by reading by going through the documentation of functions framework we got to know that uh, it requires a main.py py file okay mm -hmm. so now again this is guesswork okay so what what we can try to do is we can try to find main.py file in slash workspace uh, workspace directory Makes sense. Um, let me let me answer a question that is in the chat that is saying, um, is it normal to see these environmental variables in GCP or is this just a one off case? So as far as I know, we are attacking an SSRF inside uh, Google Cloud Functions. Cloud Functions in GCP is the same as Lambda in AWS, more or less. So I guess that these are the common environmental variables you are going to be finding um when well when you are inside a google cloud function in this case inside a python um engine is that correct yeah yeah okay continue we are going to read the the original source code of the google cloud function yes yeah uh so we already know uh knew the present working directory by reading path variables uh, sorry, environment variables, and then by reading the documentation of, uh, in the GitHub, we got to know that the name of the file for creating a function should be this main.py. So we are assuming that this file exists uh, in our current environment. So let's try to read this. Again, uh, we got a new image. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so this is environment variables. This is CMD line. Uh, and this is main.py. So we got source code. Okay. Cool. Uh, <coughs> so let me paste this here and let's move this headers uh, so this is the source code of the function which is running on the 
current web application. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you go through the code, uh, just going through means not reading. So if you see uh, on the line number two to five, there is a uh, comment. It is written only for development. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this uh, this functionality was created for development, uh, not for uh, uh, production environment. This was created for development environment or staging, but it is still there. They have not removed this code uh, from the production. So uh, if you read the code a little bit, so uh, there is a condition elif method equal to get. So they are checking whether the HTTP method is get or not and path equal to this and uh, they are doing something okay mm -hmm. post items list uh, user items something so we got some a new endpoint dump minus db and by the name also you can guess that this is a database dump makes sense because dump minus db okay mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we copy this okay <coughs> and we go to our function Uh, let's open this here and uh, so after function, I am directly uh, try to trying to access it, uh, trying to access this endpoint. Okay. So if we see uh, does not exist. Um, because you are trying to access the storage. Is uh, that what you wanted? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. 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 In the <laughs> function, where is the function? Yeah. Uh, yes, this is the function. <laughs> Thank you for uh, reminding me. Uh, yeah. Send to repeater. And we need to modify this request convert selection. No, where is change request method here? Yeah. From post to get, okay, and the send point mm -hmm. send. So we we are able to read this file, okay, or uh, yeah. we are able to fetch this, okay. So uh, we got many things here now again, unable to read. So let's copy this. Uh, as promised, we have a, a dump of the databases, and I can see we have some password, usernames, phone, num phone numbers, yeah. and personal yeah. information. Yes. So, uh, so this is a JSON format. If you are familiar with this uh, brackets, okay, and this bracket, so you can determine this is JSON. Mm -hmm. So you can try to use some online beautifier for JSON. I have tried to use J JQ for this, but it didn't work. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, so let's use uh, AI for this. Oh, beautify JSON and paste. <laughs> What are you doing? He's no, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> he refuses. No, man. no, no, no. He refuses. No, no, I have used this. <laughs> Beautify. <laughs> maybe, maybe we can use the tool he's, he's okay. saying. Yeah, but I have used this uh, when <laughs> I was solving this. So earlier I used this, so this was the output. Uh, <coughs> what okay. did I beauty? I just wrote beautify JSON and gave this output, and it did earlier. I don't know. See, this is this this is my history. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so uh, 
nevertheless so this is the output okay for this uh, uh, database dump and uh, we got this password hash you can try to crack this okay uh, i have also tried but uh, i didn't found the <coughs> hash in rocku.txt so uh, this is not the correct way to uh, correct path to go for okay mm -hmm. uh, so we have uh, some user john do okay we we got his email we got the security questions he used for this web application so now let's try to abuse password reset functionality so if you see here is a password forgot functionality and it is asking for email address email address is this john do copy paste favorite sport uh cricket copy paste new password so so this functionality is itself flawed because it it should never work like this <laughs> so yeah, they are no. not asking for old password okay <coughs> so <laughs> they should ask for old password uh, in a real application so this is a ctf so uh, this for uh, this functionality is itself flawed yeah so let's set uh, and then the password so i have set this reset passwords and change successfully now we can try to log in with john do log in as john do 12345a so we got logged in as john do cool we managed and to do an account takeover if you see yeah so if you see this our, our john do user is administrator for this uh, mm -hmm. application okay so this was the first path for 